Hi friends, I'm Ashley and welcome to Darling Cottage Diary. Today we are making three different styles of mini envelopes. You can use them for gift giving, for tags, uh, for pockets, for little um, pieces of memorabilia in your scrapbook or in your uh, art journal. So let's get started. Excitingly, these are fabric. These are not paper. You could absolutely do these with paper and obviously you have fewer steps if you use paper, but we are in the realm of being extra here on my channel, if y'all haven't noticed. So, uh, and plus there are so many fabric um, textures. There are so many fabric prints that you can't find in paper. And I don't know, I just think there's an extra coziness factor added when you use paper. So to make them stiff, and this also keeps the fabric from fraying, so you don't have to uh, finish off the edges like you would if you were sewing with them and they stayed floppy, we're going to use a decoupaging type of solution with just plain water and some places call this school glue, some say PVA glue, I'm using the Elmer's brand. Um, not sponsored, obviously, but um, it's it, that's just what I typically use, and it's also cheaper than using something like a pre-prepared decoupaging solution. Um, and you're just going to completely saturate the fabric with it. This is very similar to the um, recycling a what did I call it? It's like recycling a napkin and fabric into a journal cover. It's one of my very first videos. I'll have to link it <laughs> above and below, but it's a very similar process to adding, um, you know, very thin paper like tissue paper or um, a single ply napkin onto fabric, which I'm actually going to do with the third envelope. Um, here, this fabric I dyed with some bay leaves. I'll link that <laughs> video as well. Um, but it just was a little plain and I found the cutest, y'all, the cutest uh, napkins, like dinner party napkins at, I think, I guess you call these serviettes in other English speaking areas. <laughs> we, we say napkins in the United States, but serviettes sounds, sounds fancy, so we'll go with that. Anyway, I found these at Party City when I was getting a ton of Star Wars stuff for my kids birthday party this past weekend and um, I just found these on an end aisle and was like that is beautiful and I love them so after you've soaked your fabric and uh, with anyone that you want to cover with tissue paper or um, single ply napkin you have to make it single ply otherwise it won't work it'll peel off so single ply after the fabric is already completely saturated and then go back and totally sat saturate the paper as well and they'll be bonded like a, a regular fabric after that. It will have an extra texture from the paper but I like that because it makes it just a little bit stiffer and it, it gives an extra texture dimension that I really like. Um, if you intentionally, I'm trying to get all of the crinkles and um, creases out but if you're intentionally keeping the crinkles. There's also a way to kind of add some ink and make it look like faux leather. Um, I've done that before and <laughs> never fails. There's a corner that I have to straighten out. Anyway, after you've done that, you want to let them dry overnight or use a heat gun. Just make sure they're completely dry and peel them off of, I'm using wax paper here. You could also hang them. I didn't have space and I also assumed my kids were going to mess with them, so I did not hang mine up. I ironed them. So once they're completely dry, iron them and I just have it on, I have it on a hot like cotton setting, but I'm not, I'm not using it very much. Just enough to smooth it out because that glue will burn and smell bad. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Um, this is in uh, Ephemera Club. If you have been here before, you've heard me talk about it. It's just one of the printables way back from March. It was a little seed packet um, outline that I superimposed with a vintage, I think it's from the 60s, 50s or 60s, wallpaper sample that I found. And um, I had it set on the lowest print setting so the ink quality is not very good because I was just going to use it to cut out the last envelope um, 
anyway, if you are interested in that, you can follow the link. It's on both tiers, the, the digital libraries on both tiers. Moving on to this one right here is definitely the easiest envelope to make. <laughs> um, it's just a square. The, I'm using a four inch by four inch square here, but this can be any shape and you're just folding the, uh, the corners in. And I wanted to leave the top corner open to use this as an embellishment itself. I didn't want to, like I, I left some space where I could put some dried flowers or something in it, but I'm going to end up using this in a journal spread. So I wanted it to kind of be flatter and not be as functional. If you wanted to make it functional, you would simply skip these embellishment steps <laughs> and um, fold it over and you could do any kind of closure from a button to um, a wraparound, uh, wraparound uh, string that I'll be doing with the next one. This, I simply wanted it to be something very pretty and a more complicated piece of ephemera than just something, some plain paper. That is a type of handmade paper. <laughs> I love using different handmade papers. Obviously these are supposed to be no-so. Um, all of the connectivity is no-so, as it said in the description, but <laughs> I love the sewn edges uh, as a decoration. You could obviously just use glue, you could use hand sewing, but I, um, I like the zigzagging and it, it saves me time. <laughs> so um, the actual creation of these things are no-so, but decorate it how you want. I'm just going to be making a little, a little, I love you, my dear, <laughs> en pensée, and um, on some old 1800s music paper I have here because I wanted a little note sticking out of it, as I said, embellishment. So I'm gonna be keeping in uh, congruency with this series that I have started with like DIY holiday <laughs> stuff, um, the DIY gift series, because of all the holidays that are usually celebrated at the end of the year, but I don't want to do just gifts. I want to do wrapping, cute wrapping as well. And so I thought, you know, you could do any of these envelopes and use them as a pretty way to give money to teenagers because we know that's what they like uh, or to give gift cards to somebody um, and it just be a little more special than than you know it's, I, I love giving money and gift cards because they get to do what they want with it but I can't help feeling it's a little impersonal and so I usually do something like this to dress it up and that way it's like I don't know. I also just really like handmade gifts. I like creating something for <laughs> to to make somebody show that I put effort into thinking about them. And so that's was my goal here, but as well I wanted to um I wanted to showcase a way to make cute tags. So this way if you're giving a gift to somebody, you can you know, write their name on there instead of uh, je t'aime mon cher. You could write um, a little note and put it in there with, with your gift and hopefully that's something they keep <laughs> along with whatever gift you give them. So uh, as much as I love beautiful packaging, I'm terrible, I'm terrible at wrapping gifts. Embarrassingly, I've had to, I'm going to try to be better this year, but i like, I think a lot of Americans, or maybe just people in general, I wait till the last minute to wrap, and then I'm like, you know what, just throw it in a bag. <laughs> throw it in a bag with some tissue paper, and I'll make a cute tag. So it's like, because it looks like a five-year-old, or, or maybe younger, wrapped it, a, a feral wombat wrapped a gift that I try to give somebody, even if it's a regular box, even if it's not something difficult to wrap, like a ball or something. I've started following a couple of different like gift wrapping accounts so that I'm determined to be better at this this year. So, but I can't tell you how often 
how often I just throw something in a bag. And part of that is also some, some like eco-conscientiousness too. I love how I am that mom who has a giant closet that's nothing but recycled gift bags, like gift bags people have given. I can't bring myself to throw any away. I keep them and I just use them as my own little library. <laughs> and that way I'm not, you know, spending money on the wrapping, but I can personalize it with a little tag and it's, it's not contributing to, you know, the wrapping paper mess that is, you know, you can't recycle a lot of wrapping paper because it has a plastic film on it, um, unless you use like craft paper or plain brown or white paper. And, you know, there's all kinds of ways to stamp it and make it cute, but I'm too busy making the actual gift and the wrapping is always secondary. So I like making cute tags because they don't take nearly as much time. They show they put effort into it and throw it in a recycled bag. And that is just, maybe I just need to accept that's how I wrap things. Anyway, <laughs> Die drive over, a soapbox over. Um, on this one, uh, the measurements, I started out with a four by six. So it's a two to two to three ratio. You can do this any sh you know size that you want. And then I, um, I just made some cuts, some parallel cuts on either side. It's going to meet in the middle if you do it that way rather than overlap. I don't mind that. If you do, you'll need to make the bottom flap a little bit bigger and the side flaps a little smaller. Um, and again, this is all something very eyeballed. I may upload <laughs> this shape to Ephemera Club. Um, let me know if you'd like that, but I don't, I don't know what is I don't know. I, 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 all of y'all are crafty people. So I, if you'd like me to just save you the time of measuring, I can do that. If you're not really interested, don't, don't worry about it. Just let me know in the comments. But, um, anyway, I just used, I just used those kind of like two, three ratio measurements and then, um, rounded the corners. Something else that's nice about making your fabric stiff is you can, um, punch holes in them. I'm going to advise that you put a sticker or some paper on the inside of that flap though because, and I've had this problem before and I kind of forgot about it until it happened, that gauge, that little uh, grommet, it needs something to grab onto and fabric doesn't do that super great. So you need like a paper layer so that the grommet doesn't come off. You'll see that happen later in the video. It doesn't um, adhere very well to the fabric by itself. So just be forewarned, that's a step that I should have included and didn't. Uh, if you missed my shorts, I did update. I have a new mixture, I have a winter mixture. It's like the last restock of the walnuts before uh, the end of the year. So in these big chunky white and gold and crystal clear pieces are included in there as well as, I don't know, I had some big chunky pieces that came in. I thought they were gonna be smaller <laughs> to make the mixture, but uh, that's what I get for not double checking price uh, sizes. It's, it's okay, it's okay. We are, we'll just work with more regular size things than mixtures or than uh, regular size things and minis. But um, anyway, so for this closure, I had this out, outside piece and then that's a check glass bead that I, Got very inspired one day, about $200 worth of these beautiful check glass beads, and I still use them to this day. I think that was six years ago because I wanted to start making beaded things, and then I changed my mind. And y'all are crafters, y'all know collecting the supplies is a second hobby to the actual crafting. So you, you get it. You're like, I'm inspired by that, but I don't know what I'm gonna make. You'll figure it out. Anyway, so then you just wrap it around and it's still, the fabric is beautiful. It's little nutcracker mice, but it, it, I, I need a little pizzazz. It needs just a little something extra. So I totally got this idea from Pink Strawberries, Strawberries with a Z here on YouTube. Um, she does this, this is like her signature thing, I think. <laughs> she uses double-sided tape and then loose glitter on top of it. And not only does it stick much better, like the tape sticks to whatever you're using much better, but the glitter sticks better than if you got any kind of um, like physical glitter washi tape. I have some beautiful pink washi tape from an unnamed country, an unnamed 
business, sorry, an unnamed um, craft supplier, and it just doesn't want to stick to anything. I'll put it on, and even regular paper, it falls off, and uh, I've seen that happen a couple of times. So I've converted to this. She's converted me. Highly recommend if you need a little sparkle and not in a, not in a rhinestone way. So moving on to this third and final piece. I'm using the outline from the seed packet in Ephemera Club, cutting it out, and then folding it accordingly. So I left the top open because the flap is so small. You could cut the, the page out to where, like cut the stencil out to where it has a bigger flap, just elongate it if you wanted to close it, but the envelope itself was so big I figured it would be nice to just write a note and then pop it in the top, like rolled up, pop it in the top, or fold it up, pop it in the top so that um, it's just easier to access. <laughs> the, the flaps on that are more conducive to paper if you're doing a paper envelope, but it still works with the fabric. And I, I didn't want to embellish it anymore because I really liked just how, how it already looked with the um, serviette adhered to it, but I did want to make it a little bit special. So I decided to write an em Emily Dickinson poem on this pretty little Emily Dickinson notepad that I have. And she's one of my favorite poets. And she's just so, I, lo I love that she writes about nature and the seasons because that's my jam, but also she's just so succinct in how, she's, how she writes. It's beautiful. So if you need, if you want to learn about poetry, but you don't know where to start, highly recommend Emily Dickinson. She's easy to read and she is, for being a Victorian, <laughs> she um, is very focused on things like nature and she does mention some religion, but um, it's not so much. And honestly, it's kind of hard to find romantic era poetry that is not all about religion or love, like romantic love. So it's refreshing. I love her poetry. Anyway, I'll read that to you now. There is no frigate like a book to take us lands away, nor any coursers like a page of prancing poetry. This traverse may the forest take without oppressive toll. How frugal is the chariot that bears a human soul. It, as somebody who uses books as a primary choice of decoration around her home, as well as it's the one thing that I buy after food and, you know, like necessities and stuff for my kids. That's the one thing that I will always buy for myself. And I probably have the most out of everything as far as just treats for myself. I, I find the presence of physical books extremely comforting. I'll, I can always be transported somewhere else. I'll never be bored. I'll never be alone. It's, it's I love books so much. <laughs> so this really, really spoke to me. Um, anyway, as we're rounding out the video, I wanted to take a moment to thank my Ephemera Club for supporting me this month. Kristen, Cindy, Abigail, Kathleen, Rebecca, Sasha, Patsy, Teresa, Effie, Kim, Emily, Carly, Carrie, Leprechaun Mom, Crystal, Tracy, Britt, Alicia, Kenna, Rachel, Denise, W, Jennifer, um, Ariel, and Rasha, if you don't know about Ephemera Club. It's a monthly digital and physical ephemera from me to you. It's a big crafty hug. So if you're interested in what that is, feel free to um, check out the link below. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this and you can use it this coming season. Have a great week, everyone. Bye.